Okay, guys. Hey, welcome back to Crypto Art Australia uh, by Mitch and Matt. My name's Matt, and uh, my partner Mitch has been helping me do some analysis and fundamental um, discussion about cryptocurrency. If you haven't tuned in to our previous videos, uh, we've been talking about the current state of Bitcoin, and I did a little introduction about myself and about Mitch. And for those of you that are not aware, I'm a teacher and my background is education. And Mitch's background is academic research in cryptocurrency. He's a, um, into finance and is currently doing a PhD, um, looking at the trends and price changes and fundamentals in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. So together we've created this YouTube channel, Crypto Art Australia where we're looking for uh, specific information that can help us do an analysis. Also, uh, we're looking to put together some research and provide our technical view of the market at the moment. So how that will look like every, uh, every video is we'll start with uh, some kind of news article will uncover research that we've done uh, from secondary sources and primary sources. We'll also look at the charts and we'll look at the technical indicators which can give us an idea of what is happening in the market at the moment. So let's dive straight into it. Now if we look at uh, you know these amazing headlines, can you believe you know less than a year ago um, it was JP Morgan talking about um, Bitcoin as dominating the markets. And now we see this headline on Forbes by Billy Bambrow. JP Morgan has issued a dramatic warning over the Bitcoin markets. Down 80% as we know. JP Morgan has warned that the sliding Bitcoin market has spooked long-awaited institutional investors who many in the space have been waiting on to spark the next cryptocurrency bull run. Anticipation by financial institutions appears to be fading. Well, we know that is uh, not necessarily a 100% true. We just have regulation coming in. And we have BACT, which is um, a financially insured uh, cryptocurrency ex uh, or um, institutional investors that will be looking to put in place a regulated and uh, secure trading place uh, and exchange for uh, transacting Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. So we know that that's, you know, uh, we can argue that point. Key flow metrics have downshifted dramatically. Okay, well, that's fair enough based on their research. Uh, the Bitcoin price peaked in December last year at 20,000. Uh, has been falling steadily. Other cryptocurrencies continue to suffer disproportionately during this correction phase. That is true. Absolutely. But I think, you know, the headline here, um, more pain to come, dramatic warning, um, it's all fear. And it's the media pumping fear into uh, retail investors. And the aim is, the overall aim, is to drive the price lower. And if you drive the price lower, what can you do? You can buy it at a cheaper price. And as we know, uh, there's a famous saying, when there's blood on the streets, it is the best time to in invest. So I think that's what's happening here. We're seeing that there's a shift, there's a shift in sentiment to not just uh, um, concern, but now it's fear. We're driving fear into you as a retail investor to try to get you to sell your Bitcoin so we can pick it up at a cheaper price and then start the next bull run. So it's not going to happen anytime soon. I think for the moment, they say, usually and say for investments is don't follow the herd. In this sense, um, looking at this article, it's pro probably a good uh, idea to 
be cautious, but at the same time, you don't want to be driven by emotion. You want to be driven by the charts and the analysis of the fundamentals that that's happening. Okay, so let's have a look. Bubble burst of the year, Bitcoin, all time high. I want to highlight an important point here. The amount of development in the last 12 months is mind blowing. Last year, people were willing to pay a lot of money for nothing, and now they are not prepared to pay a lot uh, for a lot of stuff that has already been built. That's a sort of trivial way of looking at it. Murison says that while blockchain technology looks like it's here to stay, the fate of cryptocurrencies remains uncertain. I think there is demand for it. And whenever you get a price collapse like that, it will take a hell of a long time for speculators to come back. And I think in this scenario, uh, again, there is a lot of fear being driven in the markets at the moment. And I think that, again, the overall aim here is to get you to sell your Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Now, whatever your goal is, uh, you need to stick to that plan because at the end of the day, you don't want to lose money. Now, if your plan is to day trade, then day trade. If your plan is to swing trade, then do that. If your plan is to buy and hold you know, some crypto and trade the rest, do that. If your plan is to buy and hold at a certain price, do it. My opinion is that you need to try and make some money. And you're in this space because you believe that, that that is possible. So what you need to do is look at the research, look at the, the media and the articles that are, that are being written and decide whether it is useful or whether it's just trying to drive your emotions to make decisions. And in this scenario, those two articles certainly don't provide much in terms of fundamentals. They don't provide much information about the white papers of the cryptos that you're investing in. They don't provide much in the way of uh, understanding how the market is going. It's just an analysis of that of fear. It's an analysis of emotion, and you don't want that. You want to look at the charts. It's always good to get perspective on what people and what experts are saying because it's useful, but in terms of the way some articles and media frame that information uh, can sometimes not be useful. And in this case, I believe it's not. So if you look at the four hour chart on Coinbase, you can see a few things. First of all, our exponential moving averages for those people that are new to uh, reading charts, uh, they are very significant price levels. And when you see the blue line uh, go below the brown line, and the brown line here is crossed above the blue line, that's what we call an exponential moving average bull cross. And often, typically, it means that it now becomes support for these candles rather than resistance, as you've seen here. We often see a shift to the upside in terms of price. We also see, if we zoom out on the daily chart, we also see right now the blue line is currently still above the brown line. Now, if we see a bull cross, that could also be good for price, uh, and in, in which this uh, blue line then becomes uh, so the, the brown line becomes resistance. At the moment, we're seeing a bit of toing and froing in terms of price. We've seen about four green candles or five if you count this little one down here. Very bullish. Uh, but of course, the overall trend is down. And don't trade against the trend. The trend is your friend. 
the overall trend is down. The short term trend is up. So the, the question is, where do we get to next? Now we could certainly get to, if we look at the weekly chart, we could certainly get to the next exponential moving average on the weekly chart. Okay. Now the weekly chart is, this is quite a big green candle. And on the RSI, which is relative strength index, we've seen a bounce. Question is, will that continue? Typically in the stochastic RSI, when the blue line crosses the 20 level, often we see price moving up. When it crosses above the 80 level, that's very bullish. When we see the opposite, that's very bearish. So watch for that cross above the 20. Watch for the RSI to continue moving up. Watch for this MACD line, which is a, a delayed oscillator or signal to also cross and create a bull cross. Those are your indicators that you want to be looking at on the weekly chart. If you're going to trade short term, you want to be making sure that these exponential moving averages are keeping support. So here we're at 3,900. Here we're at about 3,750 or so. However, if that breaks, the trend is broken. Also, if this trend, uh, this breaks here, doesn't necessarily mean we're going to see a bigger move. In my opinion, though, I don't actually know what's going to happen, but I would say it's either one or two scenarios, and that is that we move down to test the 3,007, 3,600, and then we continue and move up, possibly up to the uh, 3, 4,006, 4,700 level, and we'll see what happens from there. The alternative is, given that the stochastic RSI, remember what we said about the stochastic RSI, if we see a bear cross and we move below the 80, that's very bearish. At the moment, it has crossed the orange line, but it hasn't moved very far down. So what we could see is another move up. So, you know, a test of 3,800 and another move up. And who knows how high we can get. Um, but yes, the bear case certainly is. We move below, we hit the exponential moving average, and we drop to 2,900. So I think it's either 4,600, uh, test the exponential moving average, test, and then up to 4,600, or we drop to the exponential moving average, maybe a lower, we create a lower higher, and then we move back down to 2,900 which is our 200 day moving average. So keep it very close eye on the price movement and what it's doing as we speak, the price is creating, we're creating a green, this was a red candle and you know, there's a bit of selling and it's an immediate buyback. So it's quite a bullish indicator at the moment, but we will see what happens. Uh, we're unsure of the outcome, but certainly we'll keep an eye on the charts. Always keep an eye on what's going on in the media. Always do your research. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not telling you to go and buy cryptocurrency. I'm telling you to do your own research. We've done some analysis here today, given you two cases. A move down, possibly. You know. 20, 30% move down, or possibly twenty percent move down or twenty percent move up. That's what we're looking at at the moment. So either way, we're in for a volatile move. Um, so keep your eyes and ears open. Now, what I'd like you to do, uh, if you're interested in this channel, guys, please uh, go onto our page. We've only just started up. 
are looking to get some more subscribers, more people engaging in the channel and writing us some comments. If you feel that if you feel that this uh, has been useful for you, please, by all means, on any of our videos, go down and share us a, a comment, uh, a like, and of course, subscribe to our channel, hit the post notification button, bell, and please, please, please subscribe. Uh, we're certainly uh, really looking forward to your feedback. We're looking forward to you um, spending some time with us investigating the market and really making an informed decision about what you are going to do with your own uh, decision making. Uh, it's really important that you do your own research and I'm not a financial advisor and I'm certainly here to discuss with you my ideas and what I believe is going to happen, which can then help you in the future. It's been great talking to you all today. I hope you have a wonderful evening. All the best. Merry Christmas to you and your family. And I hope it's a, it's a wealthy, prosperous and healthy 2019 for you all.